How's it going guys and welcome back. In Fire Emblem Three Houses there are so many different things to do, so many different activities and choices to make that realistically you're not going to get time to experience everything in one single playthrough. However there are some things that if done right we could have definitely got more use out of our first playthrough. So as usual that is exactly what this video is going to be about. So in no particular order starting out on things I wish I knew earlier in Fire Emblem Three Houses. One of the most important things if not the thing that's going to have the most impact on how much you can get out of your first playthrough is going to be make sure that at the beginning of the game as early as you possibly can, start to focus on the activities that increase your professor level over activities that maybe get affection and other progressions. You'll have plenty of time to increase your affection and relationships with characters a little bit later on in the game, but focusing on increasing your professor level as early as you possibly can is going to make your playthrough so much more complete. The significance comes from the fact that the higher your professor level, the more activity points you're going to have to spend every single free day you get. So then when it gets to a point where you have a decent amount of activity points every single time, you can start focusing on other things, like especially faculty training would be the second thing you want to start prioritizing. The reason faculty training is so important is because unlike the rest of our characters which we can teach whichever skills we want, but our protagonist however, outside of combat, doesn't really have any other way of leveling up skills for the most part. What I would usually recommend is actually using the faculty training to specialize towards the stats that you need for the characters you want to recruit as early as you possibly can. For those of you who are maybe really new at the game, to recruit any NPC or character from other houses, you'll generally have to have a decent affection level with them and charm also helps increase the chances of them joining, but on top of that most of the NPCs are going to require that you have a minimum amount in certain stats such as maybe faith or certain skills such as spear use and stuff like that, so make sure you're specializing your faculty training around the stats that you want for the characters you wish to recruit early game. And without jumping into any spoilers, make sure that you recruit anyone who you wish to recruit from other houses before you reach the end of chapter number 11. That's all I'm going to say about that, but definitely keep that in mind. And now we're on the topic of recruiting members. Remember to buy the gifts from the Eastern and Southern Merchant each time you have some free cash left over, and they're in stock. They usually restock all of their wares once a month after each main mission, so definitely try to buy up as many of these you can, and not only to increase the affection from characters from other houses, but also the ones you wish to grow your relationship with inside this playthrough. Even if you don't want to spend all of your cash, you can just check out what gifts the characters you wish to deepen your bonds with like and prefer, and then just simply stock up on those each time you have a chance to. And the earlier you start doing this, the better, because obviously if they only restock once a month, the later you leave it in the game, the less overall gifts you're going to be able to buy. And giving characters their favorite gifts is one of the quickest ways to increase their affection rate towards you. Another thing that's kind of important that didn't affect me personally, however it could have easily done if I'd have taken a different pathway, is take into account that some of the later master classes are actually gender specific, which means if you choose a male character you, you won't be able to upgrade to some of these classes and vice versa. So maybe look ahead into the master class that you're planning on going down to and make sure it's not a gender specific class before you decide to take that route. There's not many of them, however there are some. Also related to the classes system is just because you can upgrade maybe to the intermediate or the advanced class, don't necessarily do that straight away before maxing out the previous class you already have equipped. After pretty much every action in combat, your character will get a little bit of XP towards his mastery of that specific class. And when you max out that class, you usually gain an ability. These abilities, for the most part, are passive effects that you can equip onto your character. And these aren't actually class restricted, which means once you unlock these abilities for maxing out your class, that character can always equip that even if he completely changes from class. So I'd highly recommend trying to max out as many of the classes as you can before advancing through to the next one, just to have the widest range of ability selection as you possibly can, as some of them can be really, really useful. On the same note, remember to check your abilities and combat arts quite frequently here in the menu, and make sure that you don't have anything funky equipped, because sometimes if you already have the max amount of abilities equipped, if you unlock another one that's actually related to the class you are using, it'll put it in the reserve menu where you don't actually have it equipped, because he may have accidentally learned some stuff from other skills he's not actually using, and it's taken up spaces, so definitely go back and check your abilities, and the same goes for the combat arts. Make sure you're checking these at least once every couple of missions, just to make sure that you've not got anything weird going on there. Now there are a couple of things that you should always be doing every single time you go back to the monastery. The first and most important without a doubt is definitely do the gardening every single time guys. Never miss out on the garden activity when you're doing exploration. The main reason being it doesn't use up any activity points which means there's really no reason to not do this. And second of all if you cultivate the seeds properly when you come back to pick them up next time there's a high chance that you get some stat boost in items. These are the items that when you consume them with a specific character 
it'll level up those stats permanently so you can get extra more strength, more faith and stuff like that without actually having to go into combat. And you also get a decent amount of professor point experience for doing the gardening. And the other thing I would always recommend doing, how it's not as important, is always check the advice box. Again, for the same reason it doesn't use up any activity point, and you can gain some affection with a random character. Like I said, it's not as important because maybe the affection is going to be with a character that you don't really care for much, but still there's really no reason not to do this. I'm not sure about for you guys, but for me, keeping up with all the battle quests was kind of a pain and a hassle and became tedious pretty quickly, so I had a big list of activities to choose from. And all I'm going to say on this front is make sure you're at least trying to keep up with the paralogue battles, as those are the ones that's going to not only add a decent decent amount to the backstory of those characters, but also they're going to net you some pretty unique items, sometimes they can be in form of unique named weapons, and other times they can be battalion squads. So if you are going to be doing battle quests, try to get the paralogue ones done first with the most priority. And again, on every single one of these episodes, there's always at least one tip that I give that's normally an embarrassing one that most people probably realize this way earlier, it's probably even in the tutorials, but something I realized pretty late game is the whole convoy system. First I realized it was the protagonist who could always use it, then on random turns I realized some of the other characters could use it, and I'd never really looked into it, I, I kind of just passed over it and forgot all about it. But the convoy, which means you can switch items between the character and the ones you have stashed away in your storehouse, can be used not only by the protagonist, but also anyone who's in range of the protagonist. So if any of the other characters are standing next to your protagonist on their turn, they will also have access to the convoy to switch out some of their items. Like I said, most of you probably already know this, it's probably in the tutorials, but just in case. And similarly to what we mentioned before, making sure you recruit anyone before chapter 11 from other houses, as after that you won't be able to, is before you go through to New Game Plus, what I would recommend doing is spending all of your gold on battalions. And while that may seem a little bit weird, the reason for this is because when you go through to New Game Plus, you don't really keep anything, like you don't keep your gold, your skills, your affection points, anything like that. But for some strange reason, you do keep your battalion squads. So if you stack up and buy as many of these as you can before you go through to New Game Plus, and then sell them back once you start your new playthrough, you can get a big boost in gold that you start the game with. And obviously you're going to get less back for selling them than it costs you to buy them, but it's better than losing all of your gold. Though battalions aren't the only thing you keep, you do also keep your renown experience and the abilities you unlocked by leveling up the statues by using your renown points. So maybe if you've got some free time, stack up on as much renown known as you can by doing some battle quests or some side quests and stuff like that as it does also carry on over to new game plus now two pretty much useless things but again i didn't realize them at the start was the little avatar on the loading screens is actually controlled by tilting your controller pad left and right and because i always play like without really moving much i didn't notice this until like really really late and one other little thing that i didn't realize until pretty late is if you go into the support conversations notice above some of the letters there'll be a little arrow what it means is that support conversation or that support level is pretty much blocked and capped by story related events so if there's a little arrow above the sea it it means no matter what we do, we can't get past that level of support, or can't unlock that conversation until a certain point in the story. So I think we covered pretty much everything that I wanted to in this video, and hopefully there's some useful tips and things you didn't know in there. If you have been playing for a while, or there's anything we didn't mention here, definitely do leave it in the comments down below to expand this as much as you possibly can. And I hope you did find this video helpful. If you did, don't forget that thumbs up button, subscribe for more content coming very soon, and we'll see you next time.